Okay, um, first of all I'd like to say that we're delighted to be back working with the schools, ICT Qatar, the SEC and other stakeholders this year. It's a fantastic project and we're really looking forward to moving things forward. The journey so far in the KNET has been a really successful one. Staff, students and some parents have begun to realise the benefits of the technology. We have to continue that success this year. We have to continue to be innovative and the school should not afraid to take calculated risks and try new things. The emphasis this year is on teaching and learning. Last year we supported the project managers a lot in getting the system stable in the schools in terms of its structure, its setup and its hierarchy. And this year we have to focus on the students and how the students benefit from the learning of the system. We also want to ensure that we're getting parents engagement. Parents should be able to communicate more easily with the school and engage in their child's learning. Today we have quite a few of the teacher champions here who have up until now done an absolutely fantastic job. And this year you need to take more of a leading role in the project and we will work with you and support you in taking that role. So when we talk about the project having a pedagogical focus, what does this actually mean? We're going to focus on using the KNET to support best practice in education. And we need to explore with you what that best practice is and how you apply the technology to the teaching and learning. I will stress that it's not all about technology though. What we have to build is a blended learning environment. First of all, we're going to focus on good lesson planning and delivery. How would you structure a good lesson using the KNET? And then how would you deliver that lesson? We're then going to look at differentiation. And for those of you who were at the ceremony at the end of the last academic year, you will remember that Moses School presented their project that they worked on last year around differentiation. So supporting students within one class and across a year group who have different levels of ability. And this year we want to roll back that philosophy out across the schools so that all of the teacher champions and all the schools can understand how to use the KNET to support differentiation. We're also going to look at cross-curricular subject teaching. So how do we develop ICT as a subject across other subjects? So for example, teaching spreadsheets through mathematics. And English. English is a high priority subject in the schools in Qatar. English as a second language is challenging. So through science, through maths, through ICT, through Islamic studies, through social studies, how do we integrate English as a subject? And how do we use the KNET to support the development of English when we're teaching other subjects as well? Project-based learning. Project-based learning can take place across a group of subjects, a bit like cross-curricular learning, or it can take place within a subject across a year group. So for example, in science, you may run a project on the environment, and you may team up with the maths department because there are synergies between uh, the subjects around the project theme. But the idea of the project theme is that we provide a project which engages students, that interests them, that excites them, and brings a subject and a topic within a specialism like science to life. And we will explore with you the idea of multiple intelligences and how these can be supported. The project has seen many, many successes to date, too many to list in a presentation. We're not going to focus on individual successes of schools, but just within the project as a whole. So first of all, everybody in this room here today is a part of the KNET community. In some way, they play a role in making this project a success. And as a community, we share ideas, innovation, and we support each other. And that's a really big achievement for this project. Some of the schools have begun to adopt more progressive approaches for teaching and learning, as we've already discussed. As schools have used the KNET during the holiday period, and particularly in the last week during the school closure to communicate. So that's fantastic that when schools closed at the end of the academic year, and people went off to their own, in their own directions for the holiday period, they were still communicating with each other. There's been a lot of collaboration, working in clusters, 
teachers and project managers have really supported each other. And a fantastic aspect of the project last year was that the teacher champions created over 1,000 individual learning resources that are quality assured and are now available on the collaboration side of the KNET to Warsaw. There's been a real partnerial attitude between the teacher champions and the project managers supporting each other and sharing ideas through the technology and in the workshops. And finally, we've been working for the past year building the ICT skills of the staff in the schools and this is going a long way to helping the schools achieve the e-maturity which is set within the vision of ICT Qatar. So what's it all about? Why are we using this technology? The learner. That's the focus. So who is the learner? I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Iona. She's two and a half, and she's a learner, like everybody else in this room here. Doesn't matter what age you are, we are all learners. And if we think about how do we learn, and think about young people, for those of you who have children, for those of you who spend time around young children, they are constantly learning, and they show us how we learn naturally. We respond to stimulus to things around us. We show perseverance, and when we persevere, we learn to do things, and we become experts at things. We use our senses, taste, sound, touch, smell. Through play, we enjoy playing, we enjoy experiencing new things, and when we play, we develop skills, skills that are lifelong skills that support us in an economic environment. Through teamwork, if we collect blackberries together as a team, we collect more blackberries than if we go picking on our own. Through teamwork, we can achieve more. Through role play, through pretending to be somebody else. From the environment that we are surrounded by and what we're exposed to. Through observation, just watching, observing and learning. And from relationships, whether they're friendships or professional relationships, we learn. So in the context of this, I think to myself, my daughter will start school in two years. What will the learning be like in the classroom for her? This is a picture of a classroom in the 1900s. And this is a picture of a classroom today. And in some cases, there are some small differences. But over such a long period of time, it's incredibly similar. So we have to ask ourselves, does this environment stimulate our desire to learn? And if this is the environment that we're working with, then what do we bring into this environment to support that stimulation? What I want to do now is I just want to show you uh, a clip from um, some video footage from a chap called Alan November, who is a, a keynote speaker and uh, an educationist. Some of it won't apply to Qatar and to this project, but there's a few key messages in here, and I just want you to watch and listen to a few minutes of this video clip and uh, see what thoughts it brings through in your minds. Students do not own the learning. Designed in 1922, Carnegie Unit, Industrial Revolution, and the whole concept was teachers should manage learning, and it was efficient, went from a one-room schoolhouse where older kids taught younger kids and teachers taught many grades, many subjects, to a much focused area of one grade, one subject. And that worked well for the Industrial Revolution. You get a boss telling you what to do, go to work for a factory, boss telling you what to do. Roughly 80% of an audience like this would say students should own the learning, but in a comparison, they currently don't. So my sense is the largest issue we have isn't really technology, but it's this culture of top-down management that we've inherited from 1922 Frederick Taylor. I uh, travel and work with schools. My work is with schools. And recently, I was in a private school that made a good claim that they were the highest performing test score school in the country. Fully one-third of their students go to Ivy League schools on graduation. 
They have a phenomenal track record on the AP exam. I met with 25 students who only take AP courses for breakfast when I was at that school. <laughs> and I asked the 25 students, how often do you walk out of a teacher's classroom and you have to ask yourself, what just happened? And the answer was, every class. And I said, well, you're getting these high test scores and you have the best teachers in the country and your parents are paying $20,000 plus for tuition. If you didn't learn in class, how do you learn? And then I said, do you go to your teachers for extra help? And a young man raised his hand and said, Mr. November, all 25 of us just told you we don't understand every class. We have figured out we can't go ask our teachers for extra help. It would be the whole class every day for every teacher. It's not possible. What we do is we get together in social groups and we share notes and we work together. We have strategies for, on the weekend especially, our, our friends. Do, do you believe that? If I were to tell you teenagers are social by nature, they... <laughs> social. But, but I have to tell you that in a lot of schools, kids don't have the strategy. They don't get together, they walk out, they don't know what just happened, and it's over. Do, they're behind already. Now, I know this is hard to accept, that there are some students who walk out every day in almost every class who do not understand what just happened. What's the number one barrier to innovation in your school? Here, let me give you the answers we've come up with. Time. There isn't enough time. Learning is out of date in the context of a global economy. The way that we work and the industries that we now serve, we need skills as well as knowledge. Students are collaborative by nature. They are social learners. So we have to support a social learning culture. And change must be driven from within. Let's not wait for a crisis which is how Anna Limmer feels that change will ultimately happen. Once the crisis is big enough, we'll all be forced to change. Everybody here in this room can contribute to the change in schools in Qatar, and the KNET is a powerful tool to support that process. So what's the opportunity with the Knowledge Net? You've got a technology platform that can take learning beyond the classroom and motivate different types of learning. That technology supports a lot of those aspects of learning that we re referred to earlier. Teamwork and collaboration. Examples, you have Twossel and discussion boards. Exploration and experience. Appeal to the visual, audio and kinesthetic learner. They can use rich media and have access to web-based resources and the Britannica Encyclopedia. Independent learning. Being able to work alone, being able to be self-paced in your learning. We can do this through assigning resources to students. Being able to demonstrate that as well as skills, you have the application of knowledge through assigning tests and quizzes and exam expert. Supporting peer-to-peer -peer learning, the social learning. Students have a shared documents library that they can share their resources with other students. And lifelong learning, extend online learning to the community, invite your parents to take part in courses such as ECDL. And play, make it fun. When we enjoy what we're doing, we learn more. And when we learn, we develop skills that are skills for life. Now this is a slide which many of you in the room will have seen before and some of you won't, but nonetheless, whether you've seen it before or not, it's one that you should look at and you should ask yourself some tough questions. <laughs> Do I have my vision for the KNET project in place? Hopefully you can all answer yes, it's in my e-plan. Do I have the skills and am I building the skills within my staff to be able to use the technology effectively? Do I have incentives in place? And that's not necessarily more money, it could be time, recognition and support for the people involved at the leading edge of this project. Do I have resources? Do I have computers for my teacher champions to access to deliver e-lessons, for example? And is there an action plan? Your e-plan has an action plan in it, providing you're using it and it's up to date, you have an action plan. And if you put all of those things in place, you will be able to achieve the change that, is, that we're going through in this 
project. And again, the emotional side, it's the start of the academic year, we're probably all feeling quite motivated. Some people will be on the steep learning curve, some of the new teacher champions that we have in the project. But you will face challenges. We faced them last year, we will face challenges again this year. There will always be challenges. And at that point, we have a choice. We can ignore them, we can blame the technology, we can blame the people that we're working with, we can blame ourselves. But we need to seek support from the people around us. And when we seek that support, we can change that journey and achieve success and reward. So I just want to share with you a little bit about the project plan this year and how Ingenova are going to be supporting the project. First of all, at a strategic level, we'll be working with ICT Qatar very closely. We're going to be delivering um, a think tank team, and through the think tank team, we will develop plans that focus on a stakeholder engagement strategy, knowledge transfer, how are we going to roll this project out beyond 37 schools, and how do we make it sustainable? How do we ensure that Edgenova can lead Qatar and the country and the school? and the project will continue on and continue to grow and develop. And importantly, ICT Qatar have a strategic vision themselves about technology and about immaturity and we need to work with this uh, solution to ensure that it supports the vision. At the school leadership level, we will work with the school leadership teams this year. So you will be getting information about um, a, a leadership program that we will be delivering. And we're going to work with you to understand the wider dynamics of ICT to support a project like this. So for example, do you have enough computers in your school to enable 50% of your lessons to be utilising the KNET at any one time? If that's the vision that you have, if that's something that you want to achieve. And if you don't, what are you putting in place? What are you doing? How are you planning? to consider other areas that impact the KNET, such as infrastructure and ICT equipment. We're continuing the project manager's mentoring program this year. It was a big success last year. The project managers have done an absolutely fantastic job. And we need to continue that, working with the project managers, and we're doing that through the clustering in communities and practice. We'll be developing a school twinning program, which supports the wider rollout of the project. So how do the current 37 schools here today support new schools that haven't had access to the technology yet. And we're also going to look at an E20 programme around partnering some of the schools with schools in other countries that are using these technologies so that you can learn from each other. And finally, we're looking at leadership and sustainability, having a succession plan. What happens if the project manager in your school leaves at the end of this academic year? Who will carry on managing the project in your school? The leadership team have to know about the project and the direction it's taking in order to be able to continue on its success. At an operational level, we're working with the teacher champions, and this year we've extended the programme to other subject areas. We're focusing on best practice and implementing teaching and learning using ICT. And we talked about the areas of educational focus earlier on in the presentation. Access to resources is something that needs to continue. We have approximately 2,000 uh, teachers in this project. Imagine if every teacher created just one resource and uploaded that to Twossel. That would add to the current number, and by the end of the year, we'd have 3,000 resources available on Twossel that all 37 schools can access. And finally, engaging parents. We need to engage parents in the technology because they can become more involved in their child's learning. And evidence shows that the parents and the, and the support outside the school has a huge impact on the child's learning. And also we can improve the communication between the school and the parents. There are further opportunities for the KNET. And I just want to share some examples of things that could happen in the UK with some of our local authorities, which would be equivalent of the Supreme Education Council. Local authorities would use KNET technologies to support challenge, to support and challenge schools to improve. They would use something like the KNET to communicate policies and standards, like curriculum standards to schools. 
They will provide examples of best practice through uploading video footage and sharing case studies. They will gather school performance data, but they will do this only once. Often in schools we have to provide data to different institutions and to different people in different organisations. And if we can do this through a technology like the KNET, we only have to do it once and lots of people can access it. They would use it to create a professional development environment for teachers. So providing teachers with resources to support them in maintaining and achieving their teaching standards. And we would support clusters of schools. In, in Qatar we have uh, clusters like the Albayan complex and the Omar complex. And clusters have an opportunity to be collaborative and to benefit from economies of scale. So technologies like the Paynet can support in that process. And those are opportunities that we have in Qatar and we hope to be able to start to explore some of these in the future. And finally, I just want to finish by saying one of the corporate uh, values that we hold in Engineva is choosing to be responsible. And so long as we all choose to be responsible as individuals, as teams, as schools, and as a project community, then we will have a lot of success in this project at the end of this year. More success. Okay, I'd like to thank you.